Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, One Rental at a Time, back with a good friend and CNBC celebrity, Todd Baldwin. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for those kind words. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being with us every week. I appreciate our conversations. One of the things I want to talk about today is I want to actually use the whiteboard to talk about the most important financial metric any family has. If you're a family of one, if you're a family of 10, there is one financial metric that matters and no one talks about it. So um, you ready to break this down? Let me put my uh, little puppy who jumped on my lap. Let me put him down. This is yeah, so I'm ready. I, I, think I, know, I think I know what it is. All right. You want to take a shot? Go for it. I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume, and feel free to shame me publicly <laughs> if I'm wrong, that you're talking about discretionary income. Yes! Uh -huh. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. I mean, when I talk to most people, and sometimes I actually do conversations on this, and I ask kind of generically, some people talk income, net worth, you know, cap rates. I mean, they throw out all these freaking nonsense numbers. <laughs> there is only one number that matters for a family. And the reason this number matters is this number for most families. If you told me this number, I could tell you if you're happy or stressed. Right. And I've lived where this number is remarkably zero, zero, close to zero and sometimes negative. But let's break it down because I don't think most people realize you have the power to impact two things to make this number go up. So mm -hmm. in this case, we're talking about Sally. Not sure if you can read that. Yeah. But in this, this case, we're going to say Sally makes 50K a year. Okay. <clears throat> Fifty thousand bucks. There was a time in my life, Todd, that I thought fifty grand was a lot of money. I will freely admit that. Yeah, same. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. Oh, anyways, we're not going. Now that's like a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So since you got this right, what is the first thing that Sally needs to take out of this gross income? Taxes. Bingo. That's why this number is here for this subtraction. And we'll say that's, I don't know, 10 grand. We're doing this yearly at this point. Everybody pays taxes. And oh, by the way, <laughs> taxes, the government doesn't trust you. The government takes the taxes before you get your little hands on the money. So the first time you get a paycheck, I remember looking at my paycheck and I actually said, who the hell is this FICA guy? And why has he got all my money? <laughs> right it's like i made like 112 bucks working at fast food or something I'm like why am i paying taxes what is this all about but all of us pay taxes so in this case sally's not living on 50k she's really living on 40k mm -hmm. makes sense mm -hmm. all right now let's just rattle off big expenses that sally is likely going to have why don't, you, why don't you list off just big buckets so either rent or mortgage yep rent mortgage okay. yep what else Maybe car payment. Yep. Um, utilities. Oh, yeah. Food. We didn't even talk about benefits. If like a 401k or health insurance and all that stuff is deducted from her check. Yeah. That could be in there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, right? She's got a party. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she has um, uh, programs for kids. Yeah. yeah. And there's more stuff, right? This keeps going on and on and on. Mm hmm. Here's the deal. If at the end of the year, right, you can do this yearly, you divide by 12, it becomes monthly. It's possible Sally's got 2,400 or 200 a month. This is a year. It's possible she's got 4,800 or 400 a month. Let me ask you this. Which Sally do you think is happier? The Sally that's got 200 bucks a month discretionary or the Sally that's got 400 bucks a month. In most instances, which do you think is true? Well, 400. I mean, people hear this and they're like, well, of course, 400. I'm like, no shit, 400, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, you have one, whoops. You have one surprise birthday party. You have one whatever. On this one, your 200 has gone. Mm -hmm. But this is how I break it down. 
So let's break it down to hours because and, until you smack people, they don't understand. So in this case, we're going to assume Sally works 40 hours a week. Okay. And we're going to assume it's 2000 hours a year. Mm -hmm. So in this example, Sally, 2,400 divided by 2000, actually it's 2080. Why don't you do the real math? You know what Sally's making? She's mm. making a dollar fifteen, <laughs> and that means over here she's making two dollars and thirty cents. Ouch, folks! You don't make fifty k a year. You don't make a hundred k a year. The only number that you should think about is what is at the bottom of this slide. Sally makes a dollar fifteen an hour. Why do I say that? Because Sally's lifestyle. Sally busts her ass to pay all this shit. And she is left with the ability to spend $1 however she chooses. $1 an hour, $8 mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. $8 a day. Ouch. Just, I mean, how does that hit you? Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And I think um, that's what, you know, I, was it Richest Man in Babylon? Was that the book where they talked about like the pay yourself first? And what they were saying is like, yeah. when you get a check, it's not your money because it's your landlord's money or your car dealership's money or the grocery store's money because it's already allocated to giving it to other people. Yeah, and it is spent. It is gone. Yes, it's spent. It's accounted for. And the, the only thing that's your money is what's left over after spending. Yeah. So here's the, the so... A, I do these things to shock you. I'm hoping this shocks most of you. But here's the good news. You can make decisions today, today, to change this equation. And again, as I said at the opening, you have to do, you can do two things, right? You can attack this number or these numbers. Mm -hmm. And the best of you, the best of you. And if you watch my channel, I know all of you are the best. You should do both. Right? What you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, that the if you increase your income and simultaneously lower your expenses, it'll be a double whammy. I think if you if you had to choose one, well, okay. If you're in sales, you can increase your income. Mm -hmm. If you have a set salary job, it might be difficult to do that unless you get a side hustle, which you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you can't control your income, you have to control the expenses. The reason why I would say, like, if you had, if you could only pick one, it's way better to increase your income. And mm -hmm. the reason is because let's say you spend, I don't know, let's just say you spend $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That means as it gets closer to zero, your savings is capped at that $2,000 a month, because that's what you're spending. Mm -hmm. But if you make 50 grand, but then you have commission sales, you could double that theoretically. You could make yeah. 50,000. Oh, yeah. So if you could do both though, that would be the best. Yeah, this is what I kind of tell people. You and I both come from a sales background. I had, I've had a quota around my neck since I was 15, mm -hmm. right? So I know what it's like monthly <clears throat> or quarterly numbers fired for lack of a performance. I've seen it all. Most people don't have what we have. Most of you watching this today, go and audit what I call needs and wants. Low-hanging fruit for most people is here. It's in these numbers. Oh, by the way, I got another unfortunate truth. Don't worry about your $6 latte. Go look at your biggest expense. The cheat code to wealth is this first line, rent or mortgage payment. If you can get uncomfortable, be Todd Baldwin, have six roommates, be Spencer Cornelia, have six roommates, uh, be Anna Kelly, live in a fourplex, uh, be uh, the lumberjack, uh, have a duplex or Dion with a triplex or duplex house hack. House hacking is the cheat code to wealth. You can take your $2,000, $1,500 expense and make, I mean, even if you made it half, you're winning. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. of that falls to the bottom line <clears throat> instantly, instantly. Now I am not lost. House hacking was not an option for me. I live in the Silicon Valley. We don't have a lot of units. Uh, we, uh, I was married with a kid when I started this journey. I get it. Well, guess what? I had to get uncomfortable across 
every other metric. We didn't get a new car. We didn't eat out. We did everything we can to reduce expenses for 10 years. And oh, by the way, we focused on increasing income. For me, for most people, realizing most people are fixed, it is the expenses. It is the sacrifice from video number one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the best of you is too. And again, something that is, with, and the reason I think getting financially free or the American dream is easier today is again, if, if you want it, if you have the fire in your belly, you can bust your ass during the day and then do a side hustle in the evening. If you mm -hmm. work on a side hustle for 90 minutes a day, you'd be shocked at how much money that could be making for you in a year or two. It's just amazing. So folks, the answer to happiness relies in disposable income. I want everybody to think about double, triple, or quadrupling their disposable income this year. It's May 1st. You've got eight months. Get after it. It is absolutely possible to triple and quadruple your disposable income. First, you have to calculate it, and then you've got to get after it. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean... You can increase your income. You can lower your expenses. It's none of it's none of it's fun, right? <laughs> like it's it's way more fun to just chill and not worry about it. But if you if you want if you want freedom, mm -hmm. you have to do it. You have to do some combination of it. And if you don't want freedom, you know, I will say time freedom and money freedom. That's fine. But you're yeah. going to work for your entire life for somebody else who you might not enjoy working for. So yeah. take a few years, do what you got to do, and it will set you up for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Where can people find you? Yeah. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, you can uh, find me at, at Todd J. Baldwin. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.